Alright, welcome back, my children. So, the last time I left you, um, if I'm right, I showed you how to get this inventory, so... I made a few changes to the inventory system. Um, now you don't have to press a button to get the item to um, select. You can just have it the icon, <clears throat> the, yeah, the icon hover over the item and then close the menu, and then that's the item that you get. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it was super simple. And then I'm going to show you how to get new rewards or get rewards for your crops. So in this particular case, I'm going to water one tile and I'm going to leave the other one dry. And I'm going to press this timer key until they're all grown. Now, as you saw there, um, the one that was in the water tile um, grew faster than the one that was in the dry tile. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to harvest the items, as well as see what quality the crop is. So this one here is a normal, everyday uh, crop, or apple, or whatever. And then this one here has a nice little silver badge, so the player will instantly realize that this crop is worth more than this crop. So, yeah, I don't think... Um, I did anything else. I mean, I did more animations, uh, obviously. As you can see, she's now having a hover over her head animation. Um, and then when she uses the item, it disappears. Now, it doesn't do anything. I didn't program for that. I just have it disappear when it's consumed. So, yeah, I think I'm going to show you that as well. And how to streamline that animation state there. Or how to create another usable state for the state machine. All right. Let's get started, my children. All right. So maybe I should just start off with the inventory because that one was super, super easy. Um, all I did for the inventory is the input um, is actions just pressed, UI accept. I just removed it. It was creating a problem uh, with the usable items. So every time I selected the item um, from the inventory, it was also used at the exact same time. And clearly, we don't want that. So I just got rid of it. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, just got rid of that little little line of code, and it works better now. Um, it just emits the signal when it's hovering over there, and everything works all hunky dory. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show is the used object script, I guess, and then the new inventory screen. So I guess, I'll, actually, you know, I think I'll do that first because it was actually quite simple. So I'm not sure if I showed this before or not. I think I did, but each item um, has a type within the inventory box that we have here as you can see here type 0 type 1 and type 2 each of these excuse me each of these correspond to a certain um, well, certain type duh but 0 would be like your placeable objects your type 1 is your plantable objects and then type 2 is all your consumables I think that's how I broke it down so I just gave them those types there um, to differentiate them, so that way I can um, write code Pacific, Pacific for each one. So that's what these are. I think, I, like I said, I think I showed you how to do those last time. Um, but this time around, we just added a new one, which is get item type objects to two. So this lets us know that this is a consumable, and then it just does the exact same thing as those. It just goes through the state machine. It finds the usable state. Um, it gets its object name so it can use, and then change the state to usable. And in the state machine, as you can see here, I got usables there. And just like before, I added it to our state machine here. So as you can see here, it's got the usable added, usable added in the list, as well as the list here for the text. And then the other thing that I added. Uh, was the enter the none state and the reason why I added this is once you were out of consumables um, I just wanted to make sure that it swapped back to the none state 
That way there was no crashes or any weird bugs that would happen, such as being able to use an item that's already been used, or being able to use items even though your, em your inventory was completely empty. So yeah, those are those things. So let's just move on from that. Okay, so let's get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. Um, so the first thing that I did Apples, apple seeds, there we go. So the first thing that I did is I created a script for the seeds. So there's the apple seeds, and here are the peach seeds. They both share the same script. Um, I probably should have used resources for this. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not too familiar with resources. Um, I come from the pie game background, so we don't have things like that. <laughs> um, but uh, if you know how to use resources, then you can you can go that route. But I'm just gonna write them as I normally would for now. Um, maybe later down the line I'll swap over to the um, resources. But this this works fine. This works 100% fine. So um, yeah, let's just go over the script. There are a lot of variables here. So first thing I did was I created three export variables. One is the plant name. So this is the object that's going to be placed inside the inventory that we created here. So these names have to match whatever is in here. So in this case, we have peaches, and I have peaches right there. And the same thing goes for the apple seeds. Oh yeah, so we've got apples, and in the inventory, we have apples. Now, we obviously have an amount of zero for these because we are going to plant them and then grow them and then we're gonna add them to this um, inventory that we have created. But yeah, so that's what the plant name is. Um, the watering needs, um, this is for how many days the plant needs to be watered before it's matured for you to get the maximum rewards for it. Now, you can do other things like check um, the fertilizer type and if it's, you know, snowing or raining or whatever. But um, I just kept it simple. I just wanted to check how much water um, each plant needed and then I created a export variable. That way I can put a different number in here. So for example, the apples need to be watered for four days uh, before they hit maturity. And then if they've reached that threshold, you would get the maximum reward. Uh, peaches are six days. So it needs to be watered for six days before it's matured. And then you get the maximum rewards for that. Um, the next thing here, as you can see under here as well. <clears throat> excuse me, one second. I've got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> right, so the next thing you see here is the days to change state. Um, this is um, how long it takes the plant to get to the next stage of its um, of its life. So as you can see here, when I plant this seed here, when I hit the timer, it changes. So that's its first stage of life, second stage, third stage, fourth stage, fifth stage, and that is also its final stage. So that's all that is. It's just figuring out how many days it takes for that to happen. So in this particular case, this is the apple seeds. So this is every single day, if it if it reaches, um, if it's watered, it will um, it will go to the next stage of life. So that's all that is. Uh, next up, we have days watered. Um, this is how many days that we actually watered the plant. So we're gonna use this to compare with its watering needs. So let's say um, the apples, since they need four days, let's say we only watered them for two days. We're gonna make a comparison to those two uh, variables and if they don't match, we don't get maximum rewards. We'll give them either a regular apple or we will we'll kill off the plant and have it wither. Um, I didn't get to create um, an HP or a health bar for this, um, as you can see here. I just didn't have the time for it. But yeah, um, at some point it was supposed to um, also check if the health ever reached zero. So every day that you watered it, the plant's health would either increase a little bit 
or it would decrease if you didn't order it. and if it ever reached zero it would be I would trigger off the withered state meaning the plant had died and then you would get no crop for it at all but I didn't get that far so um, stages of growth used to change to the next sprite so this here controls um, the actual sprite so whenever the days uh, to change state is activated, it's going to do a plus one and then it's just going to change over the sprite. So it's going to go from zero to one, one to two, two to three, two to three to four, until it reaches the end of it. That's all that is. But I decided to go with the uh, this thing instead. Um, so yeah, you can ignore these two. Um, reward name, it's an empty string. This is going to trigger, um, as you can see down here, uh, depending if we got the maximum rewards or not. So if we got the maximum reward, we're going to change it to good, and then we're going to append it to um, our list. And if we didn't, then the string is just going to remain empty. Um, I'll go into more detail on that in just a second here, but um, let's just get rid of this stuff here. Um, if I remember, I don't think I explained this. No, I don't think I explained this either. Um, this is just used to transfer the, our tile data that's all the way down here right down here that way I can use it in all the places that's all that's for don't worry I'm gonna explain what that's for um, it's no different than what we used previously for I think our sprinkler and then here's the health variables I never got around to actually implementing them so again don't worry about them all right, so the first thing that I did in the ready function is I just got the area 2D and I assigned it to a group. Um, the reason why I assigned it to a group is um, whenever the player is going over or is overlapping with the area, um, I want to be able to separate which areas or which bodies that um, I'm currently, or the player is currently overlapping with. Um, that way we can trigger um, functions dependent on which group the bodies or areas are in, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if I have a, a um, example. Where's my strike box? Ah, here it is. This is a perfect example of what it is that I'm talking about. So as you can see here in the strike box on the area enter, if the area is in group plant area, then we can call these functions here. And if the area that we're in isn't in this group, then it's just gonna ignore it entirely. Um, I think I explained this in another video, but just in case I didn't, that's, that's all that's for. Just to make sure there's no um, Conflicts. There we go. There's no conflicts with code. All right. So after that, I added a new function called plus day, and all that's going to do is exactly what it says. It's just going to add a day to the plant. So this is actually called, if I remember correctly, in my tile map. All right. That way, each of those plants get a plus one on their day. Um, assuming they've been planted. Obviously, if they haven't planted, then they're not going to be in the list, and then the code's not going to run. Um, obviously, this helps with keeping track of your plants. So if you planted a, I don't know, an apple tree on Monday, and then you decide that you wanted another one on Wednesday, the, those days would be separate from each other. Um, so the one that was planted on Monday would have, you know, two or three days, depending on how you want to... Um, organize your days um, and then the other one would have zero days because it was just playing it so yeah so this one here like I said just adds a, uh, a day to the plant to see how long it's, it's uh, been to the ground and then this one here is days till its next stage and again this is to where is this is in apple seeds This is just for to keep track of when this plant should change its day, or excuse me, this will keep track of how many days have passed before its next its next stage uh, of its life should trigger. 
Then here we have if water soil has the plant, the check planted soil. Again, that's what this was for. Um, whenever our plant or our crop is on a tile, it's going to go through and find out what that data is, whether it be a two or four. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna really explain this. I've gone through it like a dozen times. You can literally check out any video that I did um, with this Stardew Valley clone slash farm. I might change it back to its original name. We'll see. Um, but yeah, all this is doing is just finding the the tile data within it. So it's either two or four, and then it's just going to spit it back out here and then give it a stage growth plus one. Otherwise, it's just gonna get 0.5. Um, this controls the speed at which the plant is growing. So if it's on a tile that's been watered or a tile that's been fertilized and watered, um, it's gonna grow twice as fast as one that's just in plain dry soil. Now, I didn't explain this um, because again, I explained it before, but you need an enter and an exit um, for these, uh, that way if the, when the tile changes, um, it's triggered um, when it's entered and it's exited. Um, the reason being is, it, I don't know why it does this, but um, if the plant is already on a tile and it's been triggered in, if the tile ever changes, it won't register it. So you need the exit one as well. So just... Just throwing that out there. I think I explained that in another video again, but reiteration, hooray. All right, so then after that, um, we have days till next stage is equal to zero, and this is just resetting the timer. So once the, whoops, once the days have reached this point here, uh, looks like I forgot about this if statement. <laughs> so let's, let's, back up and rewind a little bit. So this is gonna activate the uh, stage timer. It says days till the next stage. If it's equal to days to change, which is right here. So when this thing goes off right here, plus one, and let's say this was actually plus two. So on the second day, it's gonna go to its next phase. It's going to say, okay, uh, days to the next stage are two. That's equal to this days to change state. Let's find out if it was watered, which it was, or if it, or if it wasn't, and then we're gonna have a, a growth, a grow, and then after that, we're going to reset the timer. That way, it the cycle starts all over again. That way, it can start entering its next stage after its second or third stage, dependent. And then here, um, stages of growth. If they're less than the get H frames, then we're gonna set the frame to the stages of growth. So the way this is working, I guess I should explain what this is. Going back to here. Okay, so the get H frames are part of this Sprite 2D. Now, when you first put in your Sprite sheet here, um, it's gonna give you this whole, it's gonna give you the whole thing. You don't really want that for obvious reasons. Um, so depending on how many pictures you have or sprites you have, you're gonna have to um, push this up accordingly. So in my case, I have six, so I'm gonna need six of these. And all this is doing is saying, if this number here, which is gonna be zero to six, cause that's how many we, that's how many frames we have. If this is less than that six, then we're gonna set the frame to whatever number this is. Now, if you remember, the stages of growth are gonna start at zero, and then every time they um, swap over to, yeah, whenever uh, this is triggered, it's gonna ha have a plus one. So it starts, this stage of growth is gonna start at zero, and then as the plant grows, it's gonna go to one, and then we're gonna get to the next frame, then two, we're gonna get to the next frame, three, and you get the idea. So it's just slowly, going to the very end of life. And then else, if maturity is reached, is true. So all this is saying here is, if the stages of growth are no longer less than the amount of frames we have, then this plant has reached its maturity and then we can harvest it. Speaking of harvest, 
that's exactly what our next function is. So it says here, if maturity has been reached, we're going to go into our inventory, the player inventory. We're going to find the reward name, and we're going to concatenate it to the plant name. So this right here is actually become, it's two strings, and we're adding them together. Yeah. I'm going to have to go over what the how that works in a second here. So these are going to be two different strings, and then we're adding them together, and it's going to give us a name. And this name needs to match one of the names within our inventory. So if it's uh, depending on um, depending on the player's actions here, we can either give them like a good a good pair of apples, or we can just give them normal apples. Oops, don't want to go there. And then it's going to find the amount, and then it's going to plus one those. So again, if we went to, let's say it gave us good apples, we're going to go to the amount, and then we're going to have one. And then when we trigger our, or when we call our inventory system, it will appear in there. And then we're going to queue free. So obviously, once we obtain the crop, we have to destroy it from the game world. That way we can't just pick up infinite peaches, pears, or whatever it is that we planted. Now let me go back up to here a little bit. Um, as I was explaining before, um, the reward is a is going to be a string that's going to be passed onto there, and then it's going to um, add it to the other string. But the only time this is going to trigger is if the maturity has been reached, and if we haven't re if we haven't gotten the results calculated. Yeah, now the reason why I did this is because I wanted to just trigger once. That way, if the player decides to ignore their vegetable or their fruit or whatever it is for, I don't know, two or three weeks because it's already matured, um, I don't want them... I don't want this, this thing running again because um, it might... It will cause conflict. So if they've already done everything they need to do and they got the best crop that they can get, then... Um, it shouldn't go back to a regular crop and vice versa if they've already gotten a normal crop then they shouldn't be able to abuse the system where they can um, get themselves the better crop so that's why I have the uh, calculation here um, or the results calculated as, as such and then here it just um, a comparison like I said earlier um, days watered if they're greater than or equal to the watering needs meaning they've met the requirements for the plant um, I have a couple of print statements here um, you can ignore those um, we just have ourselves a nice reward um, name and then I just had that concatenated as I said earlier um, you can add whatever it is that you want in here I even have a tagline here or a little comments I do more stuff Whatever it is that you want to do, you know, if they've done it, then have the plant explode or have fireworks or whatever. And then the same thing goes for else. So if the um, if they didn't uh, reach the needs, the watering needs of the plant, then they get no reward, and it's just a normal apple or normal pear or whatever. Okay, and I think that's all of it. So yeah. I'm just going to give you a second here to just check, uh, copy all this uh, code. So here's the plus, the plus day. Again, just adds a day. Let's see here, age of the plant. Check the plant results. Here is the other piece of the codes. And then finally, to age the plant itself. Oh, I forgot about the harvest. So yeah, let's just do that as well. And I guess I need to uh, do that. <laughs> Was there any other ones that went off? No. All right, and then we'll just do these. Like I said, this is super basic. We've had used this code in other places, but just in case. And then these are super, super simple. <laughs> okay, that takes care of that. Now to call the harvest, um, to harvest the uh, plant itself, um, it's just in the strike box. 
Um, this is the get crop. Uh, I think I've already had this thing for thousands and thousands of years. Um, I just never went over it. So all we're going to do is create a variable within our old strike box here. It's going to be called crops and then get overlapping areas. This, remember, will only work with an area 2D. Just fair warning. So then after that, we're going to do four ripe crops. Again, this doesn't this variable here doesn't matter. You can make it an X if you want. In crops, so all it's saying is um, it's going to go through each and every single overlapping area within um, within the crops variable, and then if we ever press accept, which is the space bar, while we're while we're overlapping this, it's going to find the variable that we're overlapping with. It's going to find its parent, and then it's going to get the harvest. Now to get the parent. The reason why it's doing that is because um, the script, or excuse me, the first the first item or first object is going to be the sprite itself. We don't want that. We want the area. So that's why we have that to get the parent. Oh, excuse me. Um, the reason why we're getting the parent is um, so it can avoid the getting the air uh, the area because there's no script attached to it. Excuse me. I've completely botched that. Um, yeah. That's why we're doing that. So we're going to get the parent, that way we can get the plant, um, because it has a script, and then it's going to look for the harvest. <coughs> Excuse me. That way we can um, obtain our little crop, vegetable, fruit thingy, my dogger. Okay. So next up, I read the state machine. Let's go with the. I think I read the inventory. Yeah. Let's go to the used object state. So in this state here, it was, like I said, I just added to the state machine. It is number seven. It's our seventh state that we have. Um, this one is relatively straightforward. Um, I think there's still a lot of redundancies in this code. Um, I didn't quite have time to work out all the kinks, but it's functional. So that's really all I care about. Um, I can always clean it up later. So yeah, in the future, as well as so you're developing stuff, don't be afraid to write sloppy code. Just part of the uh, <laughs> part of the game. Um, you're gonna be cleaning things up anyway as you find better and better solutions to more complicated problems. All right, so enough of me having diarrhea of the mouth. Let's just go over the code here. So I created three signals. Um, remove my mouse icon, remove health item, and change state. So this one is a byproduct of the plant state and the place object state demonstration, but that's what that's for. Um, just to make sure that it removes that mouse icon. Next one, remove health item. Um, this signal is going to be fired off whenever the health item is either used or the state is changed. And then the the change state is also, again, just another byproduct of the state machine itself, just to make sure that um, when this when the state is being changed, um, this code is no longer being ran. That's just all that's for. Um, we got the player strike box back. Um, again, this is just another byproduct of the code. We got a player state. This is just to make sure that we can call the player state elsewhere. All right, now for the goodies. Um, these variables here are just to transfer data. That's pretty much all they're for. Each of these are doing something completely different. Um, one is for the sprite itself. Um, this is to, I believe, call an, a loaded object from the scene. And this is just to get the data itself from those objects. Um, I'll get to those the ready functions later. That's not that important. So here, um, if the usable object data is not equal to null, meaning we actually have an item, and we're in the usable state or usage state, is it usable? Yeah, usable state, we can run this code. So we have a function called useItem. I'll get to that later. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory what that does. Um, if, 
Okay, the next thing after that is um, if our inventory has a usable item and it's less than zero, um, we're just going to remove the held item and then we're going to enter the state of none. Um, all this is doing is to make sure that uh, if we ever run out of the current item that we're that we're holding, we just reset back to a neutral state. That way we're not able to use items that we don't have anymore or cause a conflict causing the game to crash. Um, this here, another byproduct of the other... Um, what is it? The other states that we have. Um, this is just to make sure that this time we also get rid of the object that's in our hand. Um, but it's the exact same key press. All right, so let's go to use item. Well, you know what we'll do? Find item or find object. Um, this is pretty much exactly identical to the plant state and the place object state. Um, I think the only difference is this right here. And all this is doing is um, getting the icon. That's all it's doing. So when um, whenever we have an item selected that's usable, um, Coletta will be holding it in her hands above her head. Um, and that's all that's, that's gonna be, sh um, that's all that's for. So I'm just gonna quickly just go over here. Um, like I said, you can see here, it's it's practically copied and pasted from the other the other code. All right, now to used items. Um, here, if input UI accept and our inventory amount of whatever object that we have is greater than zero, meaning we actually have one, um, we're going to essentially just go into our inventory here, and we're just going to take one out. That's it. Um, there's no other code. Uh, outside of this print statement, uh, I didn't have time to program like a health system or you know some type of weirdness that happens when you use the item outside of pr a print statement. So you can add whatever you want in there. You know if you you know eat a pear and or a peach or whatever, and you want the character to go faster or go invisible. Like, you know, sky's the limit. If you can program it, do it. Okay, so this here, the get icon overhead, uh, as you can see here, it's just getting the past object, which is, yeah, which is the actual scene itself. So yeah, that's all that is. Um, again, same, same deal here, but this time it's getting the sprite. Um, excuse me, it's getting the sprite. Um, this here, the sprite that we have that's going over her head is actually a node that has been added to our player. So we're going to do get parent. So it's going to get it's going to go all the way past. So this right here, this get parent is the state machine, and this get parent is our actual character controller, our character 2D. And then we're going to go and look for the node held item. And then after that. Um, we're going to go overhead item dot texture. So this is going to get access to its texture um, property here. And then we're going to have load icon. And the icon that we're going to load is whatever this past object's name was. So, and then here, this is just to make sure that we can, <coughs> excuse me. This is just to make sure that we can um, pass on this information to this variable here. That way, if we ever need to use it anywhere else, and we, I believe I did, um, I can see some highlights here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We will have access to it. So that's all that's for. Just to pass on the information so we have access to it elsewhere. Um, deselected items, um, usable item, or excuse me, usable object data is equal to null, and if held item sprite is not equal to null, then turn it to null. So all this is for is um, whenever, again, whenever we either run out of an item or we change the state, this will trigger and it will remove um, the data that's currently on our player. That way we're not using any items that we've deselected um, as well as not causing any conflicts with any items that we might currently be holding. So for example, you might not want to eat 
the apple you were just holding because you now are trying to set sprinklers. So that's all that's for. Um, here, state's changed. Again, just a holdover. Does the exact same thing. Just triggers um, the signal and makes sure that we don't have any usable data in our object. And then here, and this ready function here, um, these connect to those signals. So that's just to make sure that those trigger whenever those signals are emitted. And then with these here, I made sure that the, both the plant and the place object states, excuse me, also had those signals remove held item. That way, if we, whenever we enter those states, um, the the usable state is completely null and void. So that is um, oh um actually I guess I should mention this now um. When you're doing your, your inventory system, um, you have to add whatever item or items that you are programming for within inside your um, within inside your inventory. If that makes sense, as you can see, I just add a new variable. Um, this is to make sure that it never crashes. Um, there. I'll leave it up to your discretion on what you want to do. This is just one way to do your inventory system. Um, another way is that you can actually have a list that's empty, you know, like this, and then just have the items append depending on um, depending on um, which items you grabbed. like this. Right now, like I said, everything right here is kind of hard-coded. Um, you can do that and then have each of these objects have their own um, like values system. So for example, for this one here, I could probably um, add a script and put like 200 gold coins or whatever on here like that instead. But I'll leave that up to you on how you want to do that. Um, this is, like I said, just one way to do it. Um, I just decided to do it this way because I'm an idiot. No, um, just seemed like a good idea. All right, so I think that is everything for this little video. Whoops, a doodle. So yeah, we went over how the the upgraded inventory system, how to plant your stuff, how to water your stuff, and time this, and how to get a nice juicy reward. So yay! I don't know if I can do this. Nope, because I'm holding an item. So yay! Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do next after this. Um, maybe I can work on like an actual like stamina meter or an actual health meter or something like that, and maybe finally remove this ugly box that shows me what states I'm in because it's just it was just there for debugging. All right, my children, I hope you guys found this useful, and until next time, farewell!